Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we delve into Measure What Matters, a pivotal book by John Doerr that has shaped the trajectory of some of the world's leading companies and organizations. Discover the power of objectives and key results, or OKRs, a goal setting approach that has propelled organizations like Google and the Gates Foundation to unparalleled success. Durr's insight, drawn from a rich career as an esteemed investor and venture capitalist, unveils how OKRs can cultivate a culture of accountability, transparency, and innovation. Hailed as a vital guide for leaders, Measure What Matters is particularly insightful for CEOs and managers eager to harness their organization's growth, founders seeking to instill a robust cultural framework, and employees who yearn for more meaningful evaluation processes beyond annual performance reviews. John Doerr's experience is not only rooted in his tenure at Kleiner Perkins, a significant venture capital firm, but also in his role as an advisor on President Obama's Economic Recovery Advisory Board. Listeners joining us for this episode are in for a transformative journey, a closer look at how measuring the right things can indeed make everything else fall into place lighting the path for individual and collective excellence in any field. Join us as we explore the nuances of measure what matters and how it can be the critical difference in achieving your most ambitious goals. Measure what matters, how Google, Bono, and the Gates Foundation rock the world with OKRs. Introduction, the secret to streamline success, mastering objectives and key results. Picture a ship at sea, sails full, yet floating aimlessly with no destination in sight. This vessel, much like many organizations today, may have the energy and resources to move forward, but lacks a clear course to steer by. Employees feel the push and pull of uncoordinated efforts, making headway challenging to discern. Enter the compass that can guide any enterprise to its desired destination, objectives and key results known widely as OKRs. This system isn't just about setting goals. It's about setting the right goals and doing so in a way that's clear, collaborative, and adaptive. OKRs thrive on three core principles. They must be limited in number to avoid overextension, attainable to encourage progress, and transparent to foster a culture of teamwork and accountability. When executed correctly, this framework doesn't just hone an organization's aim. It infuses a spirit of continuous improvement that can elevate even a small venture to new heights of achievement. Through our journey in this narrative, you'll explore the transformative potential of OKRs, the same potential that has propelled businesses like Google to stellar success. You'll also learn about the intriguing story behind the author's personal encounter with OKRs, the trio of colors that helped maintain Google's goal-tracking efficiency, and the genesis of a groundbreaking product that sprang from Google's own innovative use of OKRs in Project Caribou. Part 1. The Unlikely Romance That Sparked a Revolution in Goal-Setting Strategy They say that love moves in mysterious ways. And it certainly did for John Doerr, the author and a pioneer in the world of business objectives. It was his pursuit of a girl's heart that coincidentally led him to the doorstep of Intel in the mid-1970s, where he was not just reunited with his former flame but also introduced to the then nascent goal-setting system known as Objectives and Key Results, OKRs. Once hired at Intel, Doerr dove headfirst into the company's culture and quickly encountered the mastermind behind OKRs, Andy Grove, a co-founding sage whose contributions would guide Intel's odyssey from a fledgling venture to a titan of the tech industry. At a seminar led by Grove, a powerful truth was imparted upon Doerr. Actions speak louder than knowledge. To transform ambitions into achievements, one must prioritize execution. Intel's aspirations were ambitious yet single-minded for instance, to dominate the mid-range computer component sector. These aspirations constitute the O's in OKRs, serving as the guiding stars for the company's concerted efforts. But a destination without a roadmap 
is a dream without a deadline. This is where key results, KRs, prove indispensable, acting as signposts measuring the distance traveled towards each objective. In one instance, Defining a KR as bagging 10 design wins for Intel's 8085 microprocessor provided a binary yardstick. The achievement was either accomplished or not. There was no room for ambiguity. The application of OKRs at Intel wasn't just theoretical. It was transformational. Under Grove's leadership, the company soared, expanding by a staggering 40% annually over his 11-year stint as CEO. Witnessing the power of OKRs left a deep imprint on Door, sparking a long-standing mission to champion this approach far and wide. He understood that the clear, no-nonsense structure of OKRs could help countless other companies navigate their way to success. Part 2. Navigating the Corporate Seas. How OKRs keep organizations on a steady course. Imagine an orchestra without a conductor, each musician playing their own tune. The result would be chaos, not a symphony. Similarly, a company without a clear focus is like a rudderless ship, active yet aimless. To avoid this, organizations can harness the clarifying power of objectives and key results, or OKRs, a method that ensures all members are playing from the same score sheet. First and foremost, OKRs advocate simplicity. At any given moment, a company should pursue only a select few objectives. This sharpens focus and aligns efforts from the C-suite to the front lines, channeling collective energy into shared targets. These top-tier objectives then break down into quantifiable key results, generally three to five per objective, to maintain that laser focus. Any more, and the company risks diluting its efforts, obscuring progress. A crucial element of this strategy is timing. Short, quarterly cycles are recommended to keep up with the dynamic pace of today's markets. This rhythm allows a company to regularly recalibrate, celebrating victories or pivoting from less successful endeavors. Take, for example, the journey of Remind, an education tech startup whose CEO, Brett Kopf, adopted OKRs to steer the company towards impressive growth. After a sudden explosion in downloads indicated potential success on the horizon, Kopf needed a strategy to keep his team unified and directed. John Durr, equipped with investment savvy and a passion for OKRs, provided both funding and guidance. With his help, Remind discerned where to channel its limited resources. For instance, when faced with the decision to implement a repeated message feature, Team Remind declined. Although in high demand, It didn't align with their time-sensitive objective to boost teacher engagement that quarter. Sticking to the OKR roadmap, they kept moving in the right direction. This disciplined focus, this art of saying not now to distractions, catapulted Remind to new heights. They not only landed a significant funding round, but also expanded their team, proving the efficacy of OKRs in keeping an organization's eyes on the prize. Part 3. The Building Blocks of Teamwork. How OKRs Create a Unified Vision for Success. Transparency isn't just a buzzword. It's the bedrock of trust and collaboration within any thriving organization. Similarly, objectives and key results, OKRs, must be visible to all to weave a fabric of shared purpose and commitment across the entire company. Consider the power of a transparent OKR. Studies emphasize its profound impact on motivation. One survey revealed that individuals are significantly more driven when their colleagues can witness their progress toward goals. By making both high-level and individual objectives public, OKRs extend an open invitation, join hands in pursuit of a common vision. Yet, with openness comes the need for alignment. It's about creating harmony between the individual melodies of employees' goals and the symphony of the company's mission. Each individual OKR should resonate with the company's high-level objectives without suffocating personal initiative or creativity. Striking this delicate balance demands a sophisticated approach, a blend of direction from above and insights from below. Google's 20% time principle is a testament to this. 
giving engineers the freedom to explore projects one day a week that they believe will propel the company's strategic goals forward. And from such freedom surged innovations like Gmail, once a side project, now a cornerstone of internet communication. But alignment can be as challenging as it is crucial. The story of the MyFitnessPal app and its founders, the Lee brothers, underscores this. Upon adopting OKRs, they quickly realized that their team's goals were misaligned, causing friction and inefficiency. To right the ship, they organized quarterly meetings where department heads shared their OKRs, pinpointing where cross-team collaboration was necessary. The outcome? A clarified vision where departmental goals complemented each other, teams worked in synchrony, and the peril of overextension was avoided. OKRs thus proved essential, not just for setting a direction, but also for ensuring that everyone in the organization rode in rhythm towards shared success. Part 4. Charting Progress. The Art of Effectively Monitoring OKRs in Action. If there's wisdom in the adage, what gets measured gets managed, then it's no wonder that recording and assessing one's path towards goals can dramatically enhance the likelihood of actualizing them, just like keeping a travel log can enhance the journey to a destination. In the corporate realm, the periodic evaluation of objectives and key results, OKRs, functions much like a captain's log on a ship, enabling the crew to verify their heading and adjust the sails accordingly. A study from California revealed a striking boost in goal achievement, a 43% leap, when individuals not only penned their goals, but also shared their progression with others on a weekly basis. OKRs, in essence, are this principle scaled up to organizational size. Take Google's approach. Regular meetings, typically monthly, where the progress towards quarterly OKRs is evaluated. Beyond mere status updates, these sessions serve to identify hurdles, fine-tune key results in light of new information, and ensure that the wheels of progress are greased and turning. Within these evaluations, four choices present themselves to the ones responsible for OKRs. To continue, update, start anew, or stop an objective. If the current trajectory is promising, continuance is a given. But if shifting circumstances have thrown a key result off course, an update is in order. At times, an unanticipated opportunity or challenge necessitates starting a new OKR mid-quarter. And when an OKR simply isn't delivering, as was the case with Brett Kopp's proposed peer-to-peer -peer payment system at Remind, it's time to bring it to a halt. But how does one measure the progress toward an OKR? Google utilizes a color-coded scale that ranges from 0 to 1.0 to assist contributors engaging their success. A score between 0 and 0 0.3, marked red, signals a standstill. Yellow, spanning 0 0.4 to 0 0.6, indicates advancement but not completion. And green, from 0 0.7 to the ultimate 1.0, celebrates the crossing of the finish line. Intel the bedrock from where OKRs emerged, practiced a similar grading system. When their ambition was to prove the supreme performance of the 8086 chipset in 1980, one key result was the distribution of 500 sample coprocessors by quarter's end. Their shipment of 470 garnered a commendable 0 0.9, painting a nearly perfect score in their pursuit. Regardless of the nuances, this method of continuous assessment serves as a compass. It informs whether to steady the course or change tack, ensuring that every stride is a step closer to the summit of success. Part 5. Reaching for the Stars. The Remarkable Impact of Stretch Goals on Organizational Growth. In the landscape of achievement, some milestones stand taller than others, like monoliths challenging enterprises to dare climb them. These are the stretch goals, ambitious, audacious targets that compel organizations to push beyond the bounds of their comfort zones and strive for the extraordinary. Behind every stretch goal lies a mountain of potential, a chance to galvanize teams and ignite a spark of creativity and drive. Research substantiates the value of these objectives. When employees are encouraged to stretch their capabilities, they not only work harder but also invest more passion and innovation into their roles. 
For those wondering whether to implement stretch goals, Google's methodology offers valuable insight. The tech titan delineates its OKRs into two categories, one for consistent day-to-day objectives or committed objectives, and the second for grand transformative aspirations or stretch objectives. While committed objectives aim for full completion, stretch objectives accept an inherent risk of failure. In Google's experience, stretch objectives are not met approximately 40% of the time. Yet, despite the chance of falling short, the allure of high-reward stretch goals can justify the gamble, especially when there's a financial cushion to soften any potential blows. The story of Google's Chrome browser is a classic example. Embarking on a mission to revolutionize web browsing, the original OKR aimed to make it as seamless as leafing through a magazine. The Chrome team's first stretch goal aspired for 20 million weekly users within the infancy of 2008 a goal that, while missed in its original time frame, stoked the fires of determination and persistence. Fueled by the energizing nature of stretch goals, the team persevered, setting audacious user targets year after year. Although some were missed, each failure proved to be a stepping stone toward greater success. By the close of 2010, Chrome had not only met, but exceeded the 111 million user milestone. Fast forward to 2018, and Chrome stands as the go-to browser for over a billion mobile users alone. It's a testament to the transformative power of stretch goals, a vivid illustration that when organizations aim high and embrace the journey, the sky is not the limit, it's just the beginning. Part 6. Transforming Performance Reviews into Dynamic Dialogues with CFRs and OKRs. Imagine a world where the dreaded annual performance review, with its laborious hours and questionable returns, is a relic of the past. Well, for an increasing number of Fortune 500 companies, this is rapidly becoming the new reality. These traditional reviews are giving way to a more fluid, constructive approach known as continuous performance management, and it's all thanks to the implementation of CFRs, conversations, feedback, and recognition much like how objectives and key results, OKRs, dusted off the cobwebs from the goal-setting process, CFRs bring a breath of fresh air to employee evaluations. They're about dialogue, not monologue, about fostering ongoing interactions instead of confining feedback to an annual event. CFRs breathe life into performance management by maintaining a steady pulse of communication throughout the year. This ensures that targets remain relevant, motivations stay high, and adjustments can be made on the fly. It's a dynamic process, a two-way exchange of insights and accolades between leaders and team members. Embracing CFRs over traditional reviews goes beyond mere efficiency. It touches on the very spirit of an enterprise's culture. It's about asking the right questions in real time. Are we setting attainable goals? Are these the most impactful objectives we could be working towards? And are we providing the inspiration our people need to thrive? Adobe serves as a shining example. With the transition from annual performance critiques to regular check-ins, they saw not just an efficiency boost, but a notable drop in voluntary attrition post-evaluation periods. Implementing both OKRs and CFRs synergistically can sculpt a workplace environment that's both aspirational and grounded one where common objectives are pursued with transparency and where every individual feels valued and heard. While OKRs outline the direction of progress, CFRs oil the gears that drive that journey forward. Combined with the aspirational spirit of stretch goals, organizations are equipped to not only reach for the stars, but to sustain a culture that celebrates each stride toward them. Indeed, Companies that view their employees as equal stakeholders in the grand adventure of success, those that invest in the well being and development of their people, often find themselves ahead of the pack, leading the charge in a world where the workplace is as human as the people within it. Final summary In a world brimming with ambitions, how does an organization rise above the rest to achieve true greatness? The answer lies in embracing the transformative framework of objectives and key results, or OKRs. This innovative approach to goal setting and management 
transcends the limitations of conventional annual objectives, fostering an environment where progress is constantly mapped and recalibrated. OKRs operate on the principle of setting clear, transparent goals that are regularly assessed and adjusted, allowing teams to navigate the fast-paced business landscape with agility. By integrating these goals with continuous open dialogues about performance, organizations can cultivate a thriving culture of collaboration, motivation, and accountability. As the final takeaway, remember that OKRs are about more than just goal setting. They are about igniting a strategic metamorphosis. By setting objectives that are both challenging and attainable, and by engaging in ongoing performance conversations, companies can unleash their full potential, ensuring every member's efforts contribute to a shared vision of success. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then. Happy reading and happy listening.